Yo, welcome back to the channel. In this video today, we're going to be going over the Magicka Dragonite for the Waking Flame patch. Now, max Magicka is 35.6k, maximum health is 18.6, magic recovery is 1.4k, spell damage is 3.2k, unbuffed, and spell crit is 61.1%. Spell pen is 5.3. Now, keep in mind, I am a Briton, and as a Briton, we get our racial passives, we get increased max Magicka, we get increased spell resistance and we get increased max magic recovery and we reduce the magic cost of our abilities by seven percent they are good and honestly you as it, your racial passives don't really matter that much you can complete any content no matter what race you are but if you're trying to push high numbers or if you're just trying to get every little advantage you can as a magicka dps the top three choices are high elf khajiit and dark elf now, the main two, would, or the top two, I would say, would be High Elf and Khajiit. I would take Khajiit over High Elf just due to the fact you get recovery passives and you get some health passives. And, uh, of course, you get health magic and stamina as a Khajiit as well. And you also get extra crit damage as a Khajiit. So, that I would take Khajiit over High Elf just over that. But just for raw power, um, not necessarily crit damage, High Elf would be the way to go. Uh, but you can't really go wrong with either one. So, 64 points into Magicka. Boon I'm running is the Thief. And the food I'm running is, I don't know why this says ice cream, but I am running Ghastly Eyeball. Now, my health is 18.7. If you feel like you need more HP in this situation, and you need more recovery, use Witch Mothers. Like, if you're running four-man content, and you're just having trouble staying alive, but you need some kind of sustain, go Witch Mothers. It's cheap, it's easy. This will give you, your magicka will go down to 33.7, but your max health go up to 21.8. Your magic recovery will drop to 1.2, almost 1.3. But uh, after you pop a potion, it will go up. Um, when you pop a potion, it will go up to uh, almost 1.6. So as you can see with the other food and that with the potion, your, help, your food is 1.8k total that's your recovery so you're pretty set on recovery no matter which way you go so if you just feel like you needed a little more health you can go witch mothers now if you're in a trial situation to where you're getting orbs you're getting so you have plenty of sustain you can go solid two salmon oh, not banker but salt two. basically what this is going to do it's going to give you no recovery so your recovery is going to drop down this is eight point uh almost nine nine hundred uh but the potion has ran off um your max magicka will go up to 36k. Your maximum health will go up to 24.2. Um, and with the potion, your recovery go up to 1.1. So that's, of course, recovery um, without worm cult and stuff like that. So that might be up a little higher in trial scenarios. Plus, you'll get shards, orbs, uh, whatever it is that you're getting for resource management in trial scenarios. So you can be good. I would use uh, buy staff food. But you're going to be heavily dependent on your resource management from your team. So, But in most four-man content, I tend to just use Ghastly Eyeball. And I am good. So, that's just me. Now, champion points, they got to change in the green tree. You can really go with whatever you like. Um, I, I would recommend 50 into Gilded Fingers and 50 into Fortune Favors. This just makes getting gold so much easier. You know, an extra 10% increase gold from everything. Uh, this will 50% increase gold find. Um, now, when it comes to enchants that help with combat or just things in general, um, Steadfast Enchantment is really nice to have. This causes your weapons to decay at a rate of 50% slower. And then Liquid Efficiency. You know, it's only 10% to not consume a potion, but it, you know, it's worth it. You know, you know, potion or poison. So your poisons. Uh, if you're using double dot poisons or your essence of spell power, all of this, it works out nice. And it gives you, even though it's just 10%, that's still a potion that you might save that you won't have to replace. If you want to, you can also use Rationer. This just gives you more stats on your food. But the food is so easy and so cheap to make that I'm really not that concerned. Now, if you are using something like Clockwork Citrus that is very expensive, um, or is it or or either way. Uh, I think I, I always get them confused off the top of my head. Either Clockwork Citrus or Tam Takeaway Broth. Um, one's Magicka, one's Stamina. Uh, either way, they are very expensive to make and very expensive in general. 
you might want this on your main bar but for me I just use liquid efficiency and then I always keep treasure hunter so it's always good to find the quality of better quality items out of treasure chests master gather which will re uh, reduce the time it takes to harvest nodes by 50% because I am always running around doing this while I wait on dungeon queues and plentiful harvest which gives me a 50% chance to get double resources from a node so because I'm always waiting on dungeon pops I am always gathering materials so I always keep these on my bar now, I keep this on my bar regardless because I just prefer to get better resources now red red is one of those it got quite a bit of stuff added to it but I still keep balanced vitality fortified rejuvenation and lastly siphoning spells on my bar these are just the ones like you do have to land the killing blow for this but I just keep them on the bar. Now, passives wise in general, Hero's Vigor is a really good one to have. I also really like Temperate Soul. Because when you get caught and you just get killed, whatever, you're lacking, you're sleeping, and you get res, you get 10% more of your resources back. So at least this way you don't wake up with almost nothing. You come back with a little more. Um, Defiance gives you costs less to break free. Tumbling costs less to roll dodge. Um, into here um, this is decent but I haven't really done anything to I don't really put these on my bar um, 20 here into sprinter because I am magic I don't have a whole lot of stamina so at least this way this helps reduce the cost of running from boss to boss as a stamina user hasty here which will increase my movement speed when sprinting so it helps me keep up and use less stamina as well Tyler's guardian which will reduce the cost of block uh, by 40 uh, increased the amount of damage I can block. Uh, 40, so it adds 4% to block mitigation. Um, I should have had this one right here done. I don't know why it came undone. Uh, increase your movement speed when bracing by 3% per stage, especially while blocking. So an extra 6% movement speed while I'm blocking. Um, I don't really bash. If I'm in a situation where I need to bash, I just put on Crushing Shock. So I don't really bash on a magic character. So... I don't really use these. That's just me. If you bat, if you don't use Crushing Shock or don't want to use it, then put some points here if you want to. Now, for the blue tree, for the passives, Eldrith Insight, Precision, and that's um, Piercing, Flawless Ritual, and War Mage. That's pretty much it. At least that's pretty much all I use. I might be missing something there. If I'm missing something, let me know in the comment section. Comment section if there's something you think I should have as a passive. Um, now, I have tried out quite a few different variations. Um, but now when it comes to the ones that I keep on my bar during four-man content and stuff like that, or when I'm running with pugs, I use Fighting Finesse, Deadly Aim, Thermometer, and Master at Arms. This is actually the one that I DPS'd with uh, to showcase the DPS numbers with. But if I'm with a group that I know and I know I can always stay behind the boss, like I have no issues with that, then a lot of the times I will uh, remove um, either Mastered Arms or Deadly Aim. Most of the time I tend to remove Deadly Aim and put Backstabber on. Um, now you can remove either one of these. Um... And just go with that. Like you can go with direct. De you can remove either one of these. It's not that big of a difference in DPS wise. Um, and just put backstabber on, fighting finesse, um, thermometer, and then you'll have either one of these on. Because um, direct damage attacks and uh, direct damage your damage done with single target attacks. Um, I don't honestly. I don't really know the difference between the two. Um, I know whip is a single target attack, but it's also a direct damage attack. So what buffs one, these basically buff the same thing. So, um, just me personally. <laughs> uh, now S sets in general, the first set that I'm running is Medusa. Medusa comes from Arts Cranium. And you're going to run around, because it is a heavy set, you're going to run around a Inferno Staff, and you're going to run around Jewelry. Now I'm running Precise, 
Flame damage enchant with jewelry. Two bloodthirsty, one infused. But you could definitely go three bloodthirsty if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. Now, minor gold, you can definitely use purple. Uh, but minor gold because, well, the rings were in the golden vendor just a few weeks ago. And I've just kind of had them. So, what this does, it just gives a spell crit, spell crit, spell crit. And it gains minor force at all times to increase your critical damage by 10%. So, this basically puts, puts a bar ability on our bar where we can free up minor force so we don't have to use Challenge Acceleration from the Sigic line and we don't have to use Rearming Trap or Barb Trap from the Fighter's Guild skill line just because of this. Uh, but if you don't want to take the time to farm this, just farm uh, Mother Sorrow to Sean, wear that, and then just switch out uh, one of the abilities for either Channel Acceleration or Barb Trap. I'll go over that shortly. So, now, for the second 5 piece set, we're running Burning Spell Weave. Burning Spell Weave, I love on a night uh, DK. It's been on almost all of my DKs. Gives us Max Magicka, Spell Damage, Spell Crit, and when you deal damage with a Flame Damage ability, you apply the Burning Status effect to the enemy and increase your Spell Damage by 473 for 8 seconds. This effect can occur once every 12 seconds. As soon as this is down, we're pretty much going to get this right back. So we're running it all in the body because it is light. Uh, all Divines all with Max Magicka. And this comes from City of Ash. You can get it from uh, City of Ash 1. That is the quickest and easiest way to form it. City of Ash 2 is easy, but it is kind of... Well, City of Ash 2 isn't necessarily... It's long. It's not necessarily hard on VET, but there's really no need to do it. When City of Ash 1 can be done on VET or normal in under 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the group. Even the worst group should be able to get through City of Ash 1 on normal in 20 minutes. So, just me. Get in there, farm it, and go with it. If you're running Mother Sorrow, you're going to want to run Mother Sorrow on the jewelry and the body, or all on the body, and run Burning Spell Weave jewelry. And then you're going to want to get a Burning Spell Weave Inferno Staff, uh, precise, and then just run you know, that way. That's all. That's the only thing you would switch. So if you're going to run Mother Sorrow over Medusa, you would just run the Burning Spell Weave Inferno Staff instead of the uh, Inferno Staff Medusa. Now on our back bar, we're running the Maelstrom Inferno Staff infused with a weapon damage enchant on it. Oh yeah, we're running a flame damage enchant on the main hand. Um, basically, this comes from normal Maelstrom Arena. Um, wall of Elements. Your light and heavy attacks deal an additional 1.3k damage to enemies in your Wall of Elements. Now, if you have trouble with light attack weaving, this isn't going to do you any good. It's just not. So if you want to, you can run either a second Inferno Staff on the back bar to keep minor force up at all times. That would probably be the better way to go. But if you're comfortable with weaving, I would really suggest working on your weaving. Because this will help you increase your damage so much. By at least 2 or 3k. In the bare minimum, at least 2 or 3k. So, I know this is nice, and it is really nice to have it static at all times, but it's not, this right here will help you a lot. It comes from Normal Maelstrom Arena. You can run Normal Maelstrom Arena within 30 minutes. At the most, it shouldn't take you too long. I mean, it might take you more than one run, but it is worth going in there and getting. So, trust me. <laughs> now, with the monster sets, you have options. Right now, I'm running Incret's Behemoth's Mask, um, Divine's Medium. Both of my helmet and shoulders are medium, and they're Max Magica with the Divine's. And the only reason why I'm running them is due to the changes in the medium armor skill line now, um, where Agility gives you increased weapon and spell damage for each piece. So that we get an extra 4 piece, and then this gives us increased critical damage by 4%. Now, I think I am missing something here. I think, no. Now, if you want to, you can get more of these. You can get the movement speed, the sneak. You can do these, the stamina recovery, but I really don't need those. So out of these tree lines, you really just need the dexterity and the agility if you want. So, now, what this does is that this comes from uh, Black, I want to say Black Drake Villa. I'm, I'm sure it's Black Drake Villa. Yeah, Black Drake Villa. <laughs> uh, just had to check. 
off the top of my head, gives us max magic and dealing flame damage to an enemy grants you behemoth aura for 12 seconds. That reaches up to 12 meters. You and up to 11 group members in the aura reduces flame damage taken by 5%. Enemies in the aura increase their flame damage taken by 5%. This effect can occur once every 15 seconds. So it's basically going to have a 3 second downtime. Now, there are some tanks. This is honestly better to run on a tank, but honestly, it's nice. Now, Black Drake Villa is not that hard on vet, especially if you're not doing the secret bosses. If you're just running through it and just doing it, it's a quick, easy dungeon, and you can get this. Now, Zons, though, is the best single target flame damage set that you can get. Uh, if you don't have Mystics. Now, if you have Harpner's Welding Kit, they're going to want to run like One Piece Slime Crawl with the rest of the set and uh, run either like a light shoulder or a light helmet, you know. So if you got Harpner's Welding Kit, it's going to be a medium legs. So you're going to have a medium. Uh, your other set here will be like uh, your Burning Spell Weave, of course, your legs. So that will be replace one of these, and then your helmet will just be like medium still, or your monster set will just be medium. So you'll still be fine. So hold on, let me try to rephrase that. If you have the mythic item Harpener's Welding Kit, that is a medium armor set. So you will run that on the legs. So Burning Spell Weave or Mother Sorrow, depending on how you're running, if you're running Medusa or not, you'll run either the shoulders or the helmet of that set. And then your monster's helmet will still be medium. Either the monster helmet or the shoulders will still be medium, I should say. So, just to clarify. Yeah. So, Zons comes from Skullcaller. If you don't have it, you're going to run the full set, of course. This is going to give you spell crit, and when you damage a nearby enemy with a light or heavy attack, you have a 33% chance to create a beam of fire that will connect to your enemy as long as you remain 8 meters within 8 meters of them. The beam deals 1.3k flame damage every 1 second to your enemy for 6 seconds. Every second, this damage increases by 100%. This effect can occur once every 18 seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. Now, if you want, if you can't get through Skullcaller, Skullcaller is kind of a pain. Falcon Scoria. Falcon Scoria is another nice set to have. It's going to give you Spell Pen, which is nice to have because we are short on, a little short on Spell Pen because of the fact we are running two medium pieces. And basically, when you deal damage with a damage over time effect, you have an 8% chance to summon a meteor that deals 6k flame damage to the target and 1.8k flame damage to all other enemies within 5 meters. This effect can occur once every 5 seconds, scales off the higher of your weapon and spell damage. Honestly, it says 8% chance, but I really feel like that's higher than that because I see this proc in almost every time that it can proc. But if you don't have either one of them, you also have other options that I apparently do not have on me at the time. So I will go to my handy dandy sticker book to discuss them. So you have Elambrus, which is a nice set that you get from Crypto Hearts 1. It adds Max Magica, and when you deal Flame or Shock damage, you have a 33% chance to come in a Meter Shower that just deals 586 Flame damage, because uh, you're not going to deal Shock damage unless you put a Shock Enchant on your bar, um, on your weapon. I might proc it that way. Um, and basically, it's just going to rain down little Fireballs. It's nice. It's probably the easiest one to get out of all of them, because it comes from Crypto Hearts 1, and it's kind of a beginner dungeon. Now, uh, after that, if you want more survivability... Ice Heart is not bad. It's going to give you a damage shield and do a little frost damage. But we're fire. We don't want frost. So we don't want that little shield. Nope. Uh, but it's there. If you want it, go for it. You also have Maw of the Infernal, which comes from Banished Cells 2. And what this does, it gives you just max magicka. And when you do damage with a light or heavy attack, you have a 33% chance to summon a fire breathing day drop for 15 seconds. The Day Drop attacks deal 2.5k flame damage and alternates between Fiery Breath, Fiery Jaws, and Fiery Claw, which alternates once every two seconds. And then finally, you have Vaults of Madness, where you can get Rothdar. It gives you Max Magicka, and when you deal damage to an enemy within 8 meters, you have a 10% chance to create a Lava Pools that swirl around you, dealing 1k flame damage to all enemies within 8 meters of you every 1 second for 5 seconds. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds and scales off the higher your weapon and spell damage. We are up close. As a DK, you are up close. You are up the boss's rear end. And Grofdar is probably the best, better set for you. It comes from Vaults of Madness. Vaults of Madness is pretty easy to get through as well. So if you can't get through City of Ash 2 to get Scoria, 
can't get through Scale Scale Pete to get Zons, go for either Groftar or Maw of the Infernal. That would be my two choices. Ah, I am missing Maw of the Infernal. There it is. So I would either go for Maw of the Infernal or Groftar. Like those would be the two sets that I would go to replace. Now, by all means, you can still use Elabras if you like the effect and just want to go with it. By all means, go for it. But if you can't get Valken Scoria and you can't get Zons, go for that. Um, another set that comes from a DLC is Domahas. It's really nice. Uh, when you deal damage, you create a fire ring. It's going to deal some flame damage and it's going to give you some spell damage. Um, but honestly, the damage is only going to be affected to people standing on the edge of the ring, so it might not be worth it. You'll get some extra spell damage, but it's not really worth the DPS. It's not going to be a DPS set for you. So, but yes, those are just my opinions on the monster sets. Um, take them with you, with what you will. Either Groftar or Ma the Infernal. If you can't get this one, Zons or uh, Scoria. Like, if you can't get one of these two starting out, or this one, then just go with either Maw or Groftar. Like I said, I know I'm repeating that, but I'm just making sure. Skills. Molten Whip. Lash an enemy with flame, dealing 9.4 tame flame damage. If you strike an enemy that is immobile or stunned, you set them off balance while slotted. Whenever you activate a different Ardent Flame ability, you gain a stack of Seething Fury, which increases the damage of your next Molten Whip by 33%. And your weapon and spell damage by 75 for 5 seconds. This effect can stack up to 3. 3 times. This is our main spammable. That's it. Burning Embers. Slash an enemy with flame. Dealing 4.7k flame damage. An additional 16.5k damage over 14 seconds. Heals, heals you for 75% of the total damage inflicted when the effect ends. Enemies hit by the initial hit are afflicted with the burning status effect. So this is how we're always going to proc burning spell weave. I mean, of course, Burning Spell, we procs instantly anyways, so it just works. Engulfing Flames. Exhale a Flaming Blast to enemies in front of you, dealing 6.3k flame damage and additional 12.8k flame damage over 14 seconds. Affected enemies take more damage from all flame damage attacks based on your offensive stats with a maximum of 10% bonus damage taken, current value 10%. This is kind of a flex spot. This is just our heal. Draw on your Draconic Blood to heal for 9.5k, increasing by up to 33% additional healthing, healing based on your missing health. You also gain major forward to increasing your health recovery by 30% for 20 seconds. So as you can see, our health recovery is like 4.19k. 419, not k. I don't know why I said that. Uh, it's extremely low, and this makes it just slightly less above extremely low. So it's still extremely low. So that little extra health recovery in that doesn't really matter. It's just there for the heal. <laughs> so, Inner Light, Summon a Moat of Mage Light. Well, we're not really using that for that. We're here for the Wall Slot. Your Max Magicka is increased by 5%. And you gain Major Prophecy, increasing your spell critical rating by 2.6k. Front Bar, we have Fiery Rage. Create a Catalyst and store at the target location that builds for 2 seconds, then lay waste to all enemies in the area, dealing 9.5k flame damage every 1 second for 7 seconds. This is a nice little burst. I usually open with this, and then afterwards, I tend to start going with the Sendar Might Ultimate. Now, if you have your mages leveled up, drop this for Shooting Star. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, Shooting Star, it takes a lot to level up. It takes a lot of XP. And I've had this glitch on me a couple times that they have reset, so it has it like, it like has stopped gaining XP on me because between XP bots, the anniversary events, I gained like over a million XP being enlightened as well, and it just like does not move. <laughs> so... And it's just stuck. It won't gain any XP. So after resetting it a lot, I finally got it to Shooting Star. And uh, it is going ever, ever so slowly. <laughs> but Shooting Star is definitely nice to have. And it will also help a lot. Having it on your bar as well, due to the passive within the mage line. And you can see our magic recovery is 1.4. And our max magic is 35.6. If you put it on your bar, that all that should go up as well. As you can see, uh, it doesn't. Oh, there it goes. I was about to say, it should go up higher than that. Uh, let me sparse well. There we go. 36.3 uh, and 1.479. So the magic recovery doesn't go up much. And max magic cook goes up by, I think, like 500 or so. 500, 600. So it ain't much, but it is a little something extra just in case. So, 
Now, back bar. Blockade of fire. Lasts for 11 seconds. Slam your staff down to create a flaming barrier in front of you, dealing up 1.1k flame damage to enemies in the target area. Every one second, burning enemies take 20% more damage from this ability. Uh, this pairs well with the Maelstrom staff because our light attacks do more while they're in this. Plus, we're going to burn our enemies constantly, so they're going to take 20% more damage from this. Uh, if you want to, you can go unstable, uh, but it lasts 10 seconds, so it just kind of works. Like, you're always, it, it's just weird. Um, with this eruption, summon a scorching cloud of ash at the target location, reducing enemy movement speed by 70%, and dealing 1.4k flame damage every one second, deal 6.5k flame damage immediately. So, like this, it's funny. I like it. A little black smoke. It's definitely interesting. Now, Flames of Oblivion, activate an aura of flames, which launches a fireball at two enemies every five seconds, dealing 7.6k flame damage. Uh, we're already get it, our, getting our major prophecy, major, uh, our major prophecy from Inner Light, so not really worried about that second effect there. Uh, Igneous weapons charge you and your group allies' weapons with volcanic power to gain major brutality and sorcery, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 20% for 50.4 seconds. I think this goes up as it levels up. I believe I'm not 100% sure, but I have a bad habit about staying on my back bar. When I, when I finish random dungeons, so that way it gets the XP. So, you know, execute. I'm just whipping. So I forget to bar swap. So, now, this is kind of a flex spot. And honestly, so is this one. Because we run Medusa, we do not need Barb Trapped or Sigic Acceleration. Most of the time, I'm using uh, uh, Sigic Acceleration. Trap Beast isn't even fully leveled up for me. Uh, but for the most part, I'm using Acceleration, which you would then turn to uh, Channel Acceleration. So, but with Medusa, we do not have to use those. And if you do, then you can either continue to use that on your bar, or you can just replace Channel Acceleration or Trap Beast, which you would then morph to Rearming Trap. Just up to you. Uh, the reason why Trap Beast is not more leveled up on mine is because uh, I made this character after Somerset. So, I just went ahead and got channel acceleration and never thought about it. Honestly, if you are not running Medusa, when you DPS test, Trap Beast is a whole lot better when it comes to DPS testing than channeled acceleration. Because when channel acceleration falls off, you really don't want to be set there for a, a 1.3 seconds casting this again. It will screw up your DPS test to where you can just throw this out and keep going with your test. So, it is definitely better. So, and then Inner Light is another flex spot. It's here on our back bar just to have consistency across the board when it comes to Max Magicka and stuff. Uh, but if you feel like you need a shield on your bar, by all means, you can put a shield on your back bar. Uh, I've actually, I've done it a few times. Now, ultimate on our back bar. Um, Standard Might, call down a battle standard dealing 4k flame damage every one second for 20 seconds. Two enemies and applying Major Defile to them, reducing their healing received and health recovery by 16%. Standing in the air increases your damage done and reduces damage taken by 15%. An ally near the standard can activate the Shackle Synergy, dealing 9.5k flame damage to enemies in the area and immobilizing them for 5 seconds. This is the ultimate we use after the initial burst with either Fiery Rage or Shooting Star, depending on which one you're going with. Uh, now, DPS testing. 35.4k, this was what I hit, and uh, it's pretty simple. It's not. It's enough to get you through any, any content and get you in a lot of content, especially vet content. And none of this is trial-oriented. Of course, if you're using trial gear, you can definitely pull more. With Zons, if you DPS test with Zons, you're going to hit... Um, I think before I blue-screened... Uh, I was trying to DPS test to show off Balkan Scoria, Zons, and uh, Behemoth. But during the second test with Scoria, I, I kind of, it blue screen. I read out. Parent, well, it didn't blue screen. I just got sent home, sent back to the main screen for spamming. So, I don't know what happened. Um, so, I just did the one test, and it's going to go over it because I didn't get to finish. But Zons was around 38k. It was like 38.1 um, Valkyrie Scoria was about 36, almost 37. It was like 36.8, close to 36.9. 
Uh, and of course this one I just did because I just left it off with that and that's the main setup I use anyways. It was 35.4. So Zahn's is definitely ha harder. Scoria definitely hits harder in the middle. And then of course this one is the last one, but this is mostly used on tanks as it is. But either way, 35.4 is still not bad. I used this exact bar setup. I used everything. Um, I even used trash pots. I did not use essence of spell power. I didn't use anything like that. I used trash pots to do this. So, yes, I have no spell power pots on me. So, it is very doable with trash. Using this for my essence of spell power or my major, major sorcery, more or less, I was just able to DPS with this and I was good. Now, keep in mind as a magic user, when you DPS test, you're going to want to debuff the enemy with uh, this. You can either do Ellie Drain if you want to keep casting it, which is the other morph. It lasts for 20 seconds and you just go with it. But to keep it short and simple and easy, that is, I tend to use Ellie Drain myself when I DPS test, but because it helps me sustain as well. It gives me minor magic still, helps me sustain. But that's just another ability in the rotation you've got to cast. So if you're not able to do that or able to maintain it, use Elemental Susceptibility. I hope I said that right. And what this does is basically all you got to do is cast it, and as long as you're in combat, it stays. So you will not have to recast this. So, like, let me go up here to my bar. I'll just switch to my bar here. Actually, we'll just do it to Flame Leash. Uh, I'll put it on my bar. I can throw it on the target. And then just swap abilities. And then start my DPS test. So as long as I'm hitting them, they will always have that debuff on them, which will allow me to DPS test pretty evenly. So, but if you can handle the extra ro the extra ability of another skill in your rotation by all means use Ellie drain it is it'll help you sustain in your testing on a three mil and go with it now if you dps test on a 21 mil you will not need that you will not need you will not need to put Ellie drain or elemental susceptibility on this thing because as you can see with nothing on it it is already debuffed so keep that in mind so if you dps test on the 21 mil you will not have to do that but the three mil uh does not have any debuffs so just keep that bear that in mind because see that's still there it's not going off it won't go off until i smack it and then we kind of go out of combat it will eventually <laughs> as we come out of combat you'll see <laughs> come on now <laughs> uh there it goes there goes that we're out of combat and now the debuff is off of it so just like that that's how that works so but like i said if you're not really able to handle the extra ability in a rotation on a 3 mil dummy, use Ellie Drain. Or if you can, use Ellie Drain because it will help you sustain. If you can't, or if you have trouble with it, just use Elemental Susceptibility. It's entirely up to you on what you want to do. So, but yeah, this is a very easy, quick and easy uh, Magic of Dragonite. So, hope you enjoy it. Hope you're having fun. And until